For millions of Americans, it's part of the morning ritual, a glass of orange juice. But that sweet start to the day is now threatened by a disease that's laying waste to Florida's multi-billion dollar citrus crop. Manuel Bajorquez has the story. Sweet, juicy Florida oranges have been a staple of Bob Roth's fruit stand since he opened in 1964. Over 40 years, we've um, kind of prided ourselves with having uh, Florida oranges. Now, a disease called citrus greening is killing groves across the state, making it harder for Roth to stock Florida's best known fruit. My concern is that we won't have Florida oranges in a few years. Um, even this year, uh, we brought in honeybells, and uh, half the fruit came in with a real green and uh, premature. They weren't ripe, had a terrible flavor. Greening is a bacterial disease spread by the Asian citrus psyllid. There is no cure and no way of knowing a tree is infected until it's too late. The tree can have a uh, uh, be infected with this disease and not show symptoms for three years. Vic Story has been growing oranges for 50 years. He's never seen a threat like this. We're spending three times what we did before greening on our on our on an acre basis, and and we're not if we don't if we don't produce more, we 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 can't stay in business. It's a concern shared by the entire industry. Since being discovered in 2005, the disease has spread to all 32 of the state's citrus growing counties. It's also been found in Georgia, South Carolina, Louisiana, Texas, and California. This is an international citrus crisis. Florida's citrus industry has already lost four and a half billion dollars and 8,500 jobs with no end in sight. I would say take a look at your eight ounce glass of orange juice in the morning and just imagine that not being there because that's how serious it is. 80% of America's orange juice comes from Florida processing plants like this one. It can process 600,000 gallons of OJ a day when there are enough oranges. The industry has less production today than it did six, seven years ago. At one point, we were over 240 million boxes. Today, we're in the 140 to 150 million box. Just drive through the state of Florida and watch the degradation of trees, and you can see the challenge that's ahead of us. Growers and the government have funneled more than $70 million into finding a cure, but that could take years, time many farmers simply don't have. Most people don't realize, though, that the 200 gallons of wastewater a typical family of four generates every day can also be recycled. Once wastewater leaves a home, it's processed at treatment facilities where liquids are separated from solids, purified, and then safely returned to waterways. The solids are also processed to eliminate any disease-causing bacteria, viruses, and parasites. What remains is a nutrient-rich natural fertilizer known as biosolids. For years, these biosolids were inefficiently landfilled, ocean dumped, or incinerated. But today, with restrictions tightening and costs for landfilling and ocean dumping rising, communities are realizing the benefits of biosolids recycling. Currently, agriculture is the number one outlet for biosolids. Through biosolids application, Rich organic nutrients can be restored to overworked soils, thereby increasing crop yields. Restoring nutrients to agricultural lands seems the most logical use for biosolids, but alternative applications have been around for years. In the bituminous cold fields of north central Pennsylvania, biosolids are used as a soil amendment to reclaim surface mines. After spent mines are backfilled and recontoured, biosolids are incorporated into the soil. The soil is then reseeded as the final step of the reclamation process. The field behind me is part of a mine site known as the Mountaintop Mine, and the biosolids application started almost five years ago. This spring will be five years. Biosolids com compared to commercial fertilizer application have very similar germination times and initial establishment. The biosolids become much more impressive after the first year uh, when everything uh, seems to come together and you get a bloom of growth. 
biosolids by their organic nature are slow release, so it's sustained for uh, significant periods of time. These tailor-made biosolids not only jumpstart plant growth by increasing fertility, but they also have the ability to fix or bind heavy metals, thereby reducing their phyto and bioavailability. Simply put, the contaminants are still present in the soil, but can't be absorbed by plants or animals. Even if they're ingested, they remain bound as part of a compound and are safely passed through the digestive system. When you're going to a certain site, you have to look at the site, discuss, try and figure out what the problems are at a site that are limiting plant growth, and based on that, come up with a specific amendment for each site that'll try and address each of those problems. What you can do with the biosolids is mix lime directly in. It's a very straightforward procedure. Just by turning it around a little bit with a loader, you can get a decent mix. And what you have when you add the biosolids and the lime together is the potential for the alkalinity that you're adding with the lime to move through the profile with the biosolids so that you can not only fix the acidity at the surface six or 10 inches, but hopefully you'll get down to 24 and even further. Analytical results of pilot tests at Leadville indicate that the biosolids treated soils reduce the available metals, thereby reducing lethal toxicity to living organisms. What this means to the locals is that after almost 100 years, the land can finally be put back to productive use. When you have a site like this, you have problems associated with poor physical properties of a soil. Uh, that's basically a result of there being no more organic matter left in the soil. Biosolids are about 50% organic matter. So when you do a heavy biosolids application, you're rebuilding a lot of the organic matter in the A horizon of the soil. Biosolids are basically your whole recommended nutrient table for plants. Uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, some potassium, um, calcium, magnesium, there's a whole long list of elements that are essential for plant growth and biosolids have basically all of those elements. Usually, once a community realizes the cost benefits as well as the advantages over traditional treatments, they're more willing to accept biosolids recycling as another green solution. Politically, it's a very cost-effective as well because um, most folks out there appreciate seeing a uh, landscape of lush green and or trees rather than cement or denuded landscape. It's a very promising technology, it's inexpensive compared to other technologies, and it takes two wastes, sludge and waste land, mining wastes, mixes them together and gets... The city of Tallahassee has a long-standing commitment and a good reputation as strong environmental stewards. We are really proactively seeking ways to implement sustainable and environmentally responsible practices in our operations. Highland Park is a perfect example of where this is happening. Well, w one of the big things that we're going to be um, pursuing the next year is to have the golf course certified as an Audubon Cooperative Sanctuary and that involves water quality, water conservation, integrated pest management, which is just trying to minimize the, the chemicals that we use, you know, to try and keep our groundwater clean for everybody, and also wildlife habitat and management. We're trying to implement a good chemical and fertility program here at Heilman, and part of that is using the biosolid for fertilizer. The biosolids are going to be, one, a financial savings for us, and also it's more environmentally friendly because they are you know, organic fertilizer, um, whereas most of the synthetic fertilizers are actually petroleum-based. The golfers are going to get a much better play off of the fairways, on the tee boxes, in the rough when they're there. Um, it's going to help build a healthier turf, and it'll be enjoyable for everybody.